117. And this week, a lot has happened. You know, the, <laughs> the Congress and the White House uh, passed the Relief Act, the largest stimulus package in our history at $2.2 trillion. And we're going to kind of dive into that just a little bit here. Uh, if we are able to get Jimmy Dague on, uh, on the call with us today, he's going to come on and talk about a little bit about his perspective on the real estate market as well. But before we get into all that here, Ruth, what <laughs> is morning. happening in Las Vegas uh, right now? If we uh, Hold on. get Jimmy Dague on, uh, on the call with us today, Stop. he's going to come on and talk about a little bit about his perspective. On That's the real a little weird market. hearing my own voice. Before we get yeah. into all that here, Ruth. What is happening in Las Vegas right now? My phone, I swear to God. I was saying I did get a new one. Anyway, right. what's going on? So, what's going on? active. Yesterday, I reported that there were um, 5,295 uh, active listings for homes. And today, there's 5,370. So, um, that's up about 75 homes. And townhomes yesterday, we had 540 active, and today we have 549, nine mm -hmm. more. Okay. And uh, yesterday we had, excuse me, we had 978 townhomes, and today we have 1,003 uh, condo, what I say, condos, we had 978, today we have 1,003. And that's a total of 6,922 homes. And that is just about two months of um, uh, inventory. And some other stats that I thought were interesting. Um, last March, on uh, for March, we did uh, 2,713 homes mm -hmm. from March 1st to March 28th at an average price of 320,000. This March, we've done 3,051 home sales wow. at an average price of 340. Wow. So uh, this March is better than last March. So that is really good news. That is good. And news. yeah, and then if you look at yesterday, yesterday we had 128 closings and the average price was 338,000. And in 2019, yesterday, which I think that fell on the middle, uh, middle of the month, um, middle of the week, uh, we had 149. So we had a few more on that particular day. But I think it was because the day of the week had fell on, mm -hmm. the time of the week had fell on. And the average price last year was 308,000. So, so last last year on March 28th, the average sale price was 308. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, the average price was 338. And I think that's pretty much what we've been reporting as far as the yeah. overall increase, 10%. 10%, that's still mm -hmm. pretty good. That's still pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And um, year to date, let's talk about some year to date figures. So year to date, we have sold 9,100 and um, 43 homes at an average price of 334. Last year, year to date, we sold 7,625 homes at an average price of 319. Now, 9,143 homes sold this year to date versus last year, 7,625 homes. And if everybody listened to the podcast that we posted, a from uh, Dr. Uh, Lawrence Yoon, who is uh, chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. Mm -hmm. He reported that uh, the economic situation with uh, the real estate market is the strongest that it's been in years. Mm -hmm. And February was the strongest. Uh, we sold more homes in February this year than we have in the last 13 years um, that year to date figures. So um, to date, the uh, real estate market is economically healthy. Yep. And he and he predicted uh, that because they're really uh, over the United States are not enough homes to go around for the people that want homes, that we will have uh, more and more pent up buyers and sellers in the marketplace once this coronavirus uh, blip is over with. 
So that's his take on it. I, I would suggest that everybody who's not an Asian Formula member uh, send that uh, podcast out. It's with Brian Buffini and Dr. Young. It is excellent. Uh, send it out to your, your buyers and sellers, everybody in your database, basically. Your friends and family need to hear it. They need to hear you know, uh, about our real estate uh, economic health. And it's very good. We also posted a um, Dr. Ben Carson uh, interviewed with Brian Buffini. And we also posted that and sent it out to everybody's uh, uh, contacts in their database. And it is also very good um, uh, and tells a different side, uh, a different perspective, I should say, of the real estate market. But they're both excellent. And uh, you should really send those out to your database. And uh, if you are an Agent Formula member, it automate those both automatically went out this week to your database. So you could follow up. It's a great way to call and say, hi, how are you? Did you get my the podcast I sent you, please listen to it. Do you have any thoughts about it and engage in conversation and stay connected to your database and your contacts now more than ever. And uh, so we were going to have Jimmy Degg today. I, uh, I don't know what happened to him, but uh, the show will go on. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll think of things to talk about. <laughs> uh, For sure. One, yeah. One of the things that, that I wanted to say today, is there's five areas of your life that I think this is a good time to uh, to maybe take some inventory and uh, examine your tactics and strategies. Um, and I didn't write them down, so bear with me. I'm going to remember them. First yeah. of all, is you know your spiritual health. You know, are you staying healthy spiritually during this time? Um, we need to be grateful grateful for all the things that we do have and grateful that we have houses to live in and we have friends and family, uh, grateful for just every little thing that we have, the food on the table uh, and stay connected spiritually to, you know, the, the wonderful world we live in. And as Gary Vee always says, you know, the odds that we're human beings is 400 and trillion to one. And that's another thing to be really grateful for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's number one. Number two is physically. So today, like every day, I'm out doing my cardio and I come back to my garage and uh, uh, every, every, every couple of days, then I do some weights and I do some abs and I, and I do some stretching. And I learned a long time ago from uh, a friend of mine that you should brush your teeth for two minutes. <laughs> so, so to that point, I have a little timer on my, I have an electric toothbrush that has a two minute timer on it. So what I do is I stand on one foot and balance myself for one minute. And then I stand on the other foot and balance myself mm. for one minute because um, maybe um, many of you who are listening today are younger. Uh, but as you get older, balance is very important. So that's just a little tip. Uh, while you're brushing your teeth, uh, start working on your balance. And if you can only do 30 seconds to begin with or 15 seconds, it doesn't matter. It'll build up. And eventually you'll, you'll, you'll get some balance and strength in your, it actually strengthens your back and your abdomen area. So that's a little tip. And I've been doing that for years. So, and eat right, of course, but try yes. to maintain yourself, um, your health because so spiritual and physical and then emotionally, I mean, these are these times um, could be causing you fear uh, and stress and, and stress, anxiety and anxiety. Right? Yeah. Try not to act on it. I mean, we, we have feelings and, and it's not good to gunny sack our feelings or to uh, put them uh, deep inside of us. But mm. try to work yourself through them, whether it's self-talk. Like when I do my uh, morning uh, walks or jogs, I talk to myself sometimes if I have something that's particularly bothering me. And it's amazing, you know, I mean, you can listen to yourself and it's just like <laughs> talking sometimes to somebody else, but at least you're getting it out there. And the interesting thing about 
fear sometimes inhibits our mind from working. So when I start talking about things that I might be afraid of or whatever, I start thinking of the other outcome of things. It's not mm -hmm. always the bad outcome, but sometimes Absolutely. when you don't express your fears, you think of just the bad outcomes. So we have spiritual, we have emotional, we have physical, and then we have finance. And, and Max and I were talking about this earlier. This is not the time to spend anything. Right. Uh, on discretionary, discretionary. Items. if it's not going to produce more business or create income for you right now now's the time to really cut down on that for sure yeah yes and uh, i i have to tell you um and uh with trepidation not buying my phone you can't see it but my phone is cracked every which way to sunday <laughs> and even to the point that the insides are showing down here um so this week I just, I, I found a plan where I could pay monthly and get a new phone, which will come Monday. But other than that, I mean, I, we've been cooking very frugally. We, not going out to dinner is a great way to save money, I've found. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> it's amazing how I, we rationalize on you know, it's five o'clock, we're going mm -hmm. home. It's so easy just to, to stop by and, and eat out versus going home and cooking and doing dishes and all those things that go along with that. But John and I have tried to make it fun. And uh, so he, he cooks one night and I do the dishes and then he cooks the next night and I do the dishes. And so um, it, it's, we've made it fun and uh, it's amazing how cheaply you can eat healthy. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I want to make a comment on, um, you know, the feelings of anxiety and, and, and fear. I mean, that, that is all normal and a part of, you know, our human nature. And that's built in as the service in a certain way, you know, prehistorically for us to run away from big lions and tigers and, and, and animals to survival. Uh, but in our current day, I mean, we, we're really not faced with that. You know, the biggest fear we have is basically uh, not being able to pay our mortgage for or rent for one month mm -hmm. or whatever, two yeah. months, right? Um, I was just talking to my wife the other day, like we've never in our lifetime, even through the 2008 crisis, we never got at one point where we were concerned about where our next meal was going to come from. Right. I mean, there's probably yeah. people in the country that 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 have that actual need, but there's very few and there's services and programs in this country. If you really uh, seek it out, you're not going to go hungry in this country. Right. right? No, right. Um, but the reason why we feel fear is one thing but feeling despair is something that's completely unnecessary and the only reason why we feel despair and hopelessness is because we feel that there's only one outcome to what's happening right now right and and that's not the case in every aspect of life in any area of your life there's always what they call an infinite possibility of many outcomes and this is something that deepak chopra yeah. talks about is that in any instance, there's an infinite possibility. Our mind is trained because we have a narrow perception of what our own experiences are uh, to yeah. think that, you know, because this happened, that happens. But there's oh, hundreds of thousands of different possibilities are out there. And yeah. not all of them are bad. No. You know, and so uh, if, if you're thinking about that, you know, get try to get confirmation beliefs that we have are nothing more than a table that has legs to support it. And the legs are our perception, our experiences and what we've you know seen in the past. Right. But yeah. that's just according to our own perspective. Right. Yeah. Right. Hi, hi cookie. Yes. We've been doing these uh, Saturday morning lives uh, now for 117 Saturdays and uh, Jimmy Degg and I are doing daily lives at nine o'clock. Uh, he was going to be here this morning, but something came up, but uh, he'll probably be uh, with me tomorrow morning. So yes, nine o'clock is the magic time on my personal <laughs> Facebook page. And we have Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Good morning. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in the office, of course. Um, yeah. Practicing social distancing. Right. I, I've seen her. I've seen her online doing uh, virtual uh, uh, happy hours, though. Aaron, so good for you. <laughs> yeah. Way to yeah. stay uh, social there. Yeah. And I was talking about the five things that we should be uh, concerned about. And I said emotional, I said um, spiritual, I said physical, and I, uh, and I said financial. And the last one, number five, is business. And uh, looking at Aaron, and Aaron is a great uh, person when it comes to uh, using social media to stay in touch with her database and her contacts and her 
future clients and uh, her friends and family. And it, this is a wonderful time to go through your database mm -hmm. and, you know, eliminate the people that, um, um, let's see what she's saying. Video, yeah. She's doing, uh, yeah, she's doing video okay. listings today. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Video listings today. That's, that's, uh, that's really cool. Yes. There's so many ways that, you know, you can use social media and technology uh, and embrace it. And uh, this is a great time to learn it. You can Google or YouTube just about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we're live streaming our classes. So you can go to Asian formulas, Facebook page and, and, and go down the uh, timeline and see all types of classes that we're doing. Um, and uh, Monday, we actually start our social media on steroids, social media uh, strategy academy starts Monday and we'll be live streaming it. And so, yes, um, Aaron, I, my kudos to you for doing that. Uh, I know uh, I wish everybody uh, uh, would do what you do. And uh, Kevin, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, we really appreciate people when, we, uh, when you give us a shout out, we know we're not just, uh, talking to each other <laughs> that, that, that's the only reason i come on is just to talk to you Ruth. i mean <laughs> yeah we're, we are trying to give back we really are right and um when you go through your database um again i posted uh, the uh, lawrence young interview with brian buffini and i also posted the interview with dr ben carson and brian buffini and that is such a super way an easy way to uh to contact people you haven't contacted in a long time, email them the link um, to the to the podcast, and I'll put it up here in just a second. Um, and it's very simple. You just copy and paste the link into the email and send something and off it goes. You can direct message it. You can text it to them. There's no reason uh, if you have uh, their phone number or if you have their, um, if you know them on Facebook or if you, uh, if you know your their email address, there's no reason why you can't be sending people this information. Mm -hmm. it, it's positive information. Brian Buffini is a terrific um, trainer and a national speaker and a mentor. He's been one of my mentors for years. And we're gonna be live streaming his Pathways to Mastery on April 17th. And please go to the agentformula.com uh, training tab and sign up because we're going to allow 10 people in the room because of social distancing. And then we're going to be live streaming to everyone else who has uh, signed up with Buffini. So you go to uh, agentformula.com slash training and you sign up for the pathways to mastery. So we know how many people that we are, um, that are going to come into the classroom and also so that we can connect you to the live stream and then you automatically get sent to Buffini to buy his class, which is $395. And that pays for all the materials. And so uh, if you do it now, you'll have time to get the materials and join our class on April 17th. So uh, again, that's the business part of the five tips for today. So here, here's a couple ideas for some postings this week too. I mean, with, all, with the news, ride the momentum of the news right now. And that was a great time to reach out um, and give resources to, especially buyers that you've been working with and even seller or, you know, prior listings who may be, you know, fin facing potential, you know, financial situations here where they need help. Um, you know, there's with the, you know, this week, the $2.2 .2 trillion relief act uh, got signed into, you know, got signed by the president yesterday. I believe yes yesterday or the day before so oh yeah actually yesterday and so there's there's websites out there that help you calculate if you google um relief calculator it basically there's several sites like the washington post and some of the other sites uh give you like a calculator to put in your you know income and how many children you have and you know it basically tells you what amount of money that you're going to be receiving through the, through either a direct deposit or the mail here what's the I name mean, of that so. what's the name of that i'll type it in so it's called you know just google i don't i don't know google relief calculator and the the first three four five listings comes up and uh, will give you this like really easy calculator that calculates basically how much of a check you're going to be getting um based on your 2019 and 18 tax returns 
So, you know, that's a that's something that you could reach out today or post on social media or do a text to clients, right? Okay. Uh, there's programs with the SBA right now, uh, the Small Business Administration, where they're doing, I believe, up to ten thousand dollars in grants, uh, where like or forgivable loans if you pay towards taxes and or, or pay towards expenses and, and employees and things of that nature. So, I mean, can, you know, can both, I jump in there for a yeah, second? Absolutely. So, so to all the real estate people that are listening, in the bill, it said if you're an independent contractor, meaning that you have to pay, you know, your quarterly taxes, they are going to defer those. Um, and so they're going to defer them to the end of the year. And you will, uh, according to the bill, you don't have to pay what you owe this year till next year. So they're, they're, they're allowing you, they're allowing you some cash flow there, which is excellent. I'm going to be uh, actually doing a, a blog on that and I'll, and I'll post it on my personal page, on my business page, I'll post it on our websites so that independent contractors understand exactly what this bill is giving to people who are independent contractors and have to report their taxes. It will give us some cash flow. And I think that was a uh, creative way to help us out who, uh, you know, um, don't get a paycheck every sure. week or so. <laughs> And, sure. and and then if you're a broker and you have employees, uh, you can you can go to the SBA disaster uh, relief site and you can apply for uh, a, a grant. Now, if you do not, if you keep your people employed, your grant will be forgiven. So they're, your loan will be forgiven. They will call it a grant. So if you need up to twenty five thousand, I've heard up to thirty five thousand. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm not sure which which amount is accurate. I apologize for that, but I didn't have time to, to fig to get that. Uh, anyway. So as long as you have, keep your employees, uh, you can apply for this loan, 25 or 35,000. And then uh, as long as you do, as long as you keep your people employed in two years, it will be a grant and you won't have to pay it back. That is, that's really a help to our, to our real estate community. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. So, I mean, there's programs out there. And, and one of the things that you want to do is just be a resource right now. And that gives you an excuse to reach out. And I, I, I know the information's out there already posted on several websites. But, you know, when you personalize, now's the time to go through your entire database and just text everybody. Yes. <laughs> right. Either video text or regular text, you know, and, and just send them this information, you know, just thinking about you right now. Yes. Hope you're doing well. You know, here's some information on, you know, the Relief Act right now yeah. and, you know, that you can calculate your income and and some other things. If you're a small business, if, if you know they're a small business owner, here's a link, a website and maybe some, you know, go out and research uh, websites that give instruction because some of these, you know, application process can, can be very daunting. And so, yeah, you know, if you <laughs> just be a resource right now and people don't forget, I can tell you this is the best time to build relationships. When things are good, people we take each other for granted. Yeah, right? we, do. we do. When things are yeah. bad, this is when you recognize who's going to be in your corner for the yes. long haul. And, and you want to be in that corner with them. <laughs> well, so, so John and I addressing the five uh, tips that I gave you, number five was business. John started going through his database and he basically just said, you know, you know, hi, Max, uh, this is a business call to let you know that I'm still in business. I'm still selling in real estate. And if you have any real estate needs or questions or I can be of service to you, please let me know. Mm -hmm. And I really hope this finds you and your family safe and, and healthy. And uh, we will get through this. And I'm going to send you, um, you know, the Dr. Young's podcast and Dr. Ben Carson's podcast some things that might interest you about real estate in our economy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and so he went on and and he kept going through his database and it's, that was basically his message to everybody. And then uh, I was talking about Business Max and John and I have been talking about farming again to a community. Uh, and so this week, uh, with the help of Diane uh, Haberman, his assistant, um, we we created the letter. We created a coronavirus flyer to go with the letter, um, and we put some other interesting information in there. Um, and we created uh, over a thousand uh, mailouts 
uh, which is a lot of work when they're just, we're doing it. We're not hiring other people to do it. Just John, me and Diane, were working on it. And those will all go out on Monday and start uh, something that John's wanted to do, you know, for a long time. But everybody knows John has uh, had his challenges over the years with the big C. So he's finally feeling really better. And I'm so grateful for that. Fantastic. And yeah. And so uh, anyway, we we're getting all that out on Monday and uh, it took all week to do it. Um, and then while well, Diana and I were doing some of the mundane things, John was calling his database and uh, every day I'm doing a daily live. Um, what I do is social media and trying to help people with it, with their technical challenges or challenges with social media. So I'm attending to my business and I know Max, you're working every day. I know right. Karen Cachero is working every day. I see people coming in and out of the office. The office lot is locked. But agents who work for us can come in. They have a fob key. Uh, we are practicing social distancing. We have gloves there. We have hand sanitizers. We have all the precautions so that we don't, uh, we all act as if we have the disease. And I think that was a good uh, tip from Dr. Ben Carson. He said, you know, if you want to really be safe, act like you have the disease and you'll keep other people safe around you by practicing some of those, uh, the, the, the booties, the, the mask, the gloves, the hand sanitizers, all those things and the six feet of, um, of social distancing. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, we were busy this week. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, and one of the things that we all got to prepare with is, is I, I know we want to always have a positive spin, but we need to consider the opposite side of things. If things temporarily turn or slow down here. And one of the things that you're as a professional business person and a salesperson here is to be prepared for resistance from your, your sellers and your buyers at this point on maybe not moving forward and doing the deal. And what are you going to say? You know, what are you going to do? Are you prepared for that right now? Because I can tell you if a, if a client's, you know, hesitating right now because they think the world's going to come to an end tomorrow or next week, um, the, the, the worst thing you can, the worst thing that could come out of your mouth from the very beginning is to make them wrong. Like tell them that, you know, they're crazy or <laughs> that, you know, no, you know, things are going to get better or whatever, you know, you need to make sure that you go through, have a process. And I have a process called, um, you know, gaining agreement for, or like I have a five step process to overcome any type of conflict. I think I shared this in like maybe 50 videos back or something like one of these videos, but make sure you have a process to overcome the potential objections and mindsets that you're going to encounter through this process. And this is the time to do it, right? And if you're not prepared, you're going to be losing business and you're not going to be able to push over the people who are just right on the edge of making a decision or going through with the decision. And they're going to back off if you don't have something concrete to tell them in a process of overcoming that mindset over there. So, um, I wanted to pose that because you're going to be facing that here soon. You know, we got to wake, we all got to wake up as a society and as, as in different industries that we could be going in for a little bit of a slowdown here, maybe in the next month or two, right? Depending on all the fundamental and economic numbers that are going to come out over the coming weeks here, uh, corporations will be start starting report reporting earnings in the first, second, third week of April here. And they're, they're going to be making forecasts. And depending on those forecasts, you know, we're going to see where the economy is right now. And the biggest unknown and the big question mark is, you know, that's something that none of us can control right now is whether or not, you know, federal and state government agencies are going to release news and, and, and information that will calm the public down and then allow businesses to get back uh, to doing regular business. And so be prepared. You, yeah. you got to make sure, you know, you, you you understand people's fears and anxieties right now and first have empathy for it. Yeah. Right. And then be a professional and give them some type of information or and abil the ability to allow them to and build a plan on how to execute what they're trying to execute. You know, it may be delayed, but keep them moving forward and not allowing them to stay just stuck where they're at right now. And we've put uh, on on our uh, site called learnagentformula.com, 
We have put the blogs that I'm mentioning and uh, all the blogs that we do. We do daily blogs now, which you may find very interesting to share. And also the uh, Market Watch blogs, which are the things with Brian Buffini mm -hmm. and Dr. Ben Carson and Dr. Young, the chief economist for NAR. So you can go there and you can copy the link and send that link to your sphere of influence. And then also, um, if you go to... Um, b.vegas you can get our training calendar you can sign up for buffini you can sign up uh, you can uh, go ahead and register um, for um, social media class next week or you can just go to uh, agentformula.com where it will be live streaming um, Monday, uh, probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday now. So we were skipping Tuesday because we, someone had uh, the room booked, but, um, I doubt that that's going to happen now. So mm -hmm. anyway, Kane and I are going to be available all next week doing training every day. I'm going to do my lives every day at nine with Jimmy Dagg. Uh, we're going to be doing training every day. And then hopefully by the 17th, we'll be, uh, we'll be, live with the uh, Brian Buffini Pathways to Mastery uh, class. And uh, we're just gonna keep on, keep on going. And like, you know, like Max, you're saying, uh, we just need to keep working. We need to keep uh, a positive attitude as much as possible. Right. There is going to be probably uh, uh, some negative, big or small fallout mm -hmm. from everything we're going through. I mean, it's inevitable. We have to just, we can't put our head in the sand no. and act like uh, things aren't going to happen. I mean, uh, we mentioned a little bit about, you know, uh, the government backed loans. Um, if we're, if, if the, po the political side of our government is giving people forbearance, that's going to make pe people, the loan people hesitate uh, in giving loans because they're not mm -hmm. going to get paid. So, you want to address that a little bit, Max? Yeah. And yes, in I mean, some type of a positive way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let's let's we got to sometimes face the facts, right? Of what yeah. could potentially be happening. We can't, like you said, dig our heads under the the right. sand and and just just be completely oblivious to what's happening right now. So, I mean, um, I'm not an expert at this. You you want to start googling um, like uh, the Association of Independent Br uh, Mortgage Brokers right now. And um, there's a great video out there, like a nine minute video on um, government backed securities and loans right now. So what's happening in the loan business right now is, is the FHA, VA, any Ginny May type of backed security or mortgage backed loans right now are the, the guidelines are, are going up, meaning, you know, from 585 FICO scores, I believe, all the way up to 640 in some cases. So the the what's happening is no the servicing industry right now does not want to buy any any of these loans right now because if they got to go a month two months three months where they don't receive payment from their borrowers uh, that they're servicing they're still on the hook to the lender to dish out that money right the principal and interest portion of it and um, he did a, a great number of why that's you know a scare right now because if a lot of these services are servicing anywhere between 100 to 200 billion dollars worth of loans if they get just a one or two percent default in the coming months right like that's a billion dollars and two billion dollars in loans that are supposed to be, be, be making payments so what's happening is they said on average every billion dollar that goes into default a month a servicer is on the hook for about 24.8 million dollars or something like that and so a lot of these servicers aren't carrying, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in reserves to be able to, to make this happen. Uh, so the, the, the mortgage market's tightening up a little bit. And FHA is probably going to be non-existent, if not, you know, only to the highest quality credit borrowers and maybe bigger down payments over the coming maybe one, two, three months until we get a clear yeah. idea of, you know, the fallout here. Yes. And so just kind of be prepared for that. Uh, you know, most borrowers might not qualify uh, if they're in that range, you know, if they're in that, like just teetering between the affordability right now. Right. And so you got to be aware of that and, and work your business and maybe start helping those people. One of, one of the biggest, you know, biggest industries that you should be focused on right now is maybe help boost credit scores right now, you know, be really good at understanding that with your clients, team up with a lender that understands that, right? Like, 
Aaron's guy at uh, Nova Home Loans. I think Dustin, Nova Home Loans Dustin, has Dustin, yeah, Dustin. and Sheila. Sheila right, and, exactly. Uh, and to understand how they can do that to boost up, because that, that that's going to be the difference maybe in the next two, three months here where this person is going to qualify or not qualify. Yeah. And so you got to be aware of what's happening, right? Really seek, you know, as all realtors right now, talk to your lenders right now, because there's something happening there that you got to be aware of that you need to adjust your business to, yeah. you know? So the key point here is that there's going to be some fallout in the economy right now. It's not going to be, you know, like it was in February quite yet. Right. It will get there again. Yes. I but think we got to come back robustly, yeah, but right. But we got to be prepared in this little window, you know, two, three, four, five, six months here where we have a, you know, kind of a shift or a slowdown in the economy. And, yeah. you know, when people don't work for 30, 60 days, they're going to use up savings. Yeah. They're going to use up other things and they may not be able to afford certain things um, or put more down payment. The money that they were reserving for down payment now goes to paying the bills, you know, and feeding their family. You got to be prepared for that. How are you as a professional in the real estate business going to be a source, a resource during this period of time so that you continue to build your pipeline, yes. right? So that when things recover, you, you, you don't want to start doing this when things are recovering. No. <laughs> it, it, you got to be doing it now, right. right? Yeah. Right. So that you become the forefront in people's mind that when they're ready, they're going to call you. Yes. And so, but you got to be aware of all the things happening right now. And, yeah. and I, I know you, Ruth and I, we share the same thing. We got to always think positively, but we get part of thinking positively is not to ignore facts and reality, but accept what's happening and then learning and developing strategies on how to move past that so that your yeah. business and your personal life doesn't yeah. get affected by it. And that's what we're telling you to do here is yeah. go find, talk with lenders right now. Because there's something happening on that side that's shifting that that business right now that could infect or could affect your business on the real estate side. Yeah, and um, uh, like Brian Buffini says, from a positive uh, point of view, just when this is over, get ready to do 12 months of work in nine months because uh, this uh, right. real estate market is is really got a lot of pent up buyers and. If you stay in touch with your database and your sphere of influence now, mm -hmm. you will be you will be some of those people who have to stuff 12 months of work into nine months. And how wonderful would that be? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, for every home we for every two homes we sell creates one job, which is a stat I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, um, and just like for every uh, casino room that is built it creates three jobs. And so, you know, those are some of the positive spins on the, uh, when this is all over. I know construction is still going on in Vegas. Yeah. So, so, you know, um, nothing is stopping. This is not like the uh, foreclosure uh, era back in 2008. Um, home, the, the real estate is the strongest part of our, economy wouldn't you agree with that i think that's a, a the wealth the strong the most wealth is in real estate yes most yeah. wealth is in real estate right now for sure yeah so it's all, all by tech tech probably second <laughs> yeah in oil third still yeah but oils uh yeah the oil industry is being decimated right now and people have to have a place to live and and uh, people want to be entertained and they're going to be they're going to want to come back to vegas and so there's a lot of of um of things as we learn about these things that max is talking about we also have to see that the, you know that not that there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow but there's a lot of work yeah. So when this no, passes and this too shall pass. Yeah, I can tell you, just like a <laughs> pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, it's very hard to find. But the ones that find it are the ones that, that end up, you know, benefiting it for decades. You know, yeah. much like the people that lived through 2008, 2009 in the real estate and the mortgage industry. I mean, they're those people had a nice eight year run here. <laughs> right. Fantastic eight year run. And. You know, the ones that, you know, have built systems and remember that period of time, you know, this is the best, uh, you know, I mean, this is another time of reset, 
you know, I sent you over, I think you sent me over a, a, a text here, a biblical text of what Psalms 48, 16 46. or something, or 46, 46 18. Yeah. Uh, it, it talks about how we have all these grandiose plans as human beings, but every once in a while, you know, higher power, God, nature, the universe, whatever you believe in, you know, has something different in mind that could be much greater. You know, yeah. one of the things that we're betting, you know, the, I don't know if I know LA is seeing some crisp air right now and no smog. And I, I if you look uh, down into the strip right now, I mean, the buildings are so clear right yes. now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause know. there's no pollution, no pollution. <laughs> so, yeah. but, uh, but be prepared is all we're saying is that you got to work harder now so that you can benefit six months down the road from now right of being more of service providing more value right now don't that if there's any investment that you want to start putting and spending money on is providing more value to your database to your clients right now right this is the time they need you and this is the reason why social media is so important right now because now people are sitting on their phones at home <laughs> right scrolling like crazy because they got nothing to do right and so yeah. hopefully you're building content that's informational educational you know engaging uh that puts you in front of them right now and well yeah and if you go and again because <laughs> this is what i my passion is mm -hmm. we're doing we're doing daily blogs and it's about things how people can uh, do things to their homes and uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, they can plan on uh, redoing their patio and, and you, just, you just do it yourself jobs are in there, how you do things. And we mm -hmm. continue to post information that you can share with people. And um, this is like, and Max says, there couldn't be a better time. So make, make the most of this. Yeah. You know, There's, this too shall pass. So, right. you know, and, and, it will pass and don't miss the opportunity that it does give you um, to reach out to people right. and exam and, and again, examine your, your, your physical uh, well-being, your emotional well-being, your spiritual well-being, your business tactics and your financial strategies for uh, like Max says, stop spending money. So <laughs> exactly right. I, I want to leave everybody with two things. Um, I remember going through 2008, and uh, just even six years ago when I was transitioning um, to a different, uh, my, my new job now, uh, there was a span of time where like I was lost. You know, actually this is about the time when I met you, Ruth. Yeah. Was, I, you know, I kind of went, I was be, I worked in financial mm -hmm. services and then went back to the mortgage business and then went back to financial services for a brief moment. And that's how I met in that win, in that small window, yeah. Ruth and I built a relationship that has now spanned the last what, five years now. Yeah. Um, but I remember going through those periods and one of the very first things Ruth says, right, you, the first thing I go through or, or I, I focus on is my, my physical health. Number one, the minute I go through, a, a, a any type of, you know, financial crisis, uh, a emotional crisis or any type of crisis in my life, the first thing I do is focus on my health, because if you don't have your health, you're not going to be able to do anything. If your state is low and you don't have enough energy, you're not going to be able to create change. You're not going to be able to take action and make decisive decisions, right? So what I did, you know, I start exercising immediately. And then, um, you know, Tony Robbins has a great morning ritual mantra that I, uh, uh, going through these periods of time, I would always tell myself, and, and, the, and the affirmation, the mantra is, um, all I need is within me now, right? And so basically as I'm walking in the mornings, or you know, running or working out or jumping, doing jumping jacks. That's what I'm saying over and over and over in my mind. All I need is within me now, right? Refocuses all the resources that you'll ever need to create any yeah. type of wealth, money, happiness in your life. That comes from you. It doesn't come from any external source. You are the source of money, yeah. of happiness, of joy, of wealth, of life, right? It's money is a vehicle that helps you you know, exchange that productivity into something else, but yeah. how that's created is through your own self resource. So yeah. all I need is within me now. Great mantra. That's I've used it mantra. for, yeah. for the last like 20 years of my life. Every time I go in through crisis, I remind myself of that and go through and get physically, you know, challenged or get, get in great physical shape. And, yes. uh, you have nothing so, I mean, to lose. yeah, 
<laughs> and that's the only thing you can control, right? I mean, that's right. and it doesn't cost money necessarily to do that. Walking, right. running, doing jumping jacks. Right now, like you know, uh, in my office, I I set up where if I don't go to the gym, I have bands and I have push up. Um, bars and stuff like that and so and and my wife i've been doing a terrible job but my wife wants to work out in the mornings now and she's doing getting up you know so <laughs> it's just when you feel good good things happen because you're in a better state of mind yeah. and your physiology directly affects how your emotional and spiritual feelings are because yeah. that instantly changes your mood like if right now if you did 25 jumping jacks i can tell you your mood changes completely Right. than it is if you're you know just sitting on the couch doing nothing right now so yeah i got some um some girls in the office uh, yesterday we we have a, a huge uh uh foyer so uh i said okay we're going to be the rockettes and we all did like 30 seconds of you know kicking our legs up and getting our because we it was like five o'clock and we still had work to do so we were doing mm -hmm. that to and to energize ourselves and uh, movement begets movement. I mean, exactly. I keep moving. I mean, motion, I just, motion creates emotions. Motion, I mean, that's, right. and it really does. And and then the second thing I want to leave everybody is this is, you know, there's very few opportunities in life that create a moment in time where you can solidify a relationship for life, right? And it doesn't happen in good times. I can tell you when everybody's doing well and and things are going well, we tend to take each other for granted, like I said earlier in the show. These are the moments when people need, you know, connection, you know, uh, uh, an, someone to, to, to listen to them, to understand them, to, you know, relay their fears and, and be there as a resource for them. Um, you don't wanna miss this opportunity to solidify the relationships that you have in your life, both personally and in business, right, because, what you do during this period of time of uncertainty and and fear and 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 chaos will define your relationship mm -hmm. for the next decade it will That's, so don't miss out on this opportunity right exactly max thank you so much we'll be back next week with yes. max uh i'll be live tomorrow at nine o'clock uh with or without jimmy hopefully uh he'll be here um don't know what happened to him today, but we'll find out. Anyway, yeah, okay. have have a great day and uh, start contacting. Stay safe. Your stay healthy. Yes. All right. Stay healthy. Take we care, love everybody. you. We love you. <laughs>